Dana White Contender Series Week 10. It's the last week of Contender Series. Welcome, everyone. I'm Andy from Winning in the Shadows. This is going to break down Dana White Contender Series Week 10. Um, I want to tell everybody we are going to be live on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel for the final week. It's a bittersweet week uh, because we're wrapping up Contender Series, but we're also giving out the BMF Award for the entire season. Each week, we nominate who had the best performance, who's the, the BMF and uh, at the end of uh, the show uh, this week, we'll we'll nominate who is the BMF from the season. And the winner from last year's, as voted on by you, the audience, was Carlos Pratez. And that has aged very, very nice. He's got himself a main event in the UFC just a little over a year after that. So encourage everyone to join us uh, on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel for that live. But let's start breaking down the fights here. Uh, we got our random four-letter word generator. This is the word for the comments. Leave a comment. Tell us uh, what your best bet is. Uh, but if you don't want to leave a comment telling us what your bet is, best bet is, just just pick our code word of the day. One, two, three, four, five. Link. There's your there's your code word. Just leave the word link in the comment section now. Let's take a look at the fights. We're going to start with uh, Mo Ado versus Jonathan Mikolev. Um, it, all of the odds on these fights. Th this week are very close. You do not have any of these like minus 500 favorites here. And this one is no different. Uh, McAuliffe is a minus 145 at the time of recording this. Ado uh, coming in at plus 114. And Ado is just going to want to get this to the ground. That's kind of where he does all of his work. You can see guillotine, rear naked, rear naked, rear naked. Um, so that, that, that's where he does most of his damage. Um, He's, he's pretty slick with how he gets fighters to the ground. I wouldn't say he's like the strongest guy with the best striking. Um, and uh, McAuliffe is definitely going to be more aggressive with the striking. Um, he he, he uh, won by rear naked uh, in his last fight, but he does have KOs, KOs, KOs. Um, got, got some decisions. He lost here against uh, Bates, but uh, made it to round four. Um Ado's just going to have to really avoid the strikes. That's that's really all there is to it. McAuliffe's a very, very powerful guy. Um, I just I think I'm going to lean with Ado just a little bit. It's not going to be a fight that I get to the window with, but I just like the way that how measured and calculated Ado is. I'm going to give the, him the very, very slight edge. Now, make no mistake, McAuliffe can win this by striking. I just think Doe's going to be able to avoid the big shots. I think he's going to close the distance, probably get it on the ground, and win a close one. Um, overs is going to be a theme uh, to this card. Like, if you're someone that likes playing uh, fights to start round two, I think you might be able to take all of these fights to start round two. Um, I'll have to wait and see what the over-under is. But um, for this one, I'm not really interested in betting on a side. I'm really interested in betting on an over, especially if a doe gets it to the ground. Um, I don't think he's I, – I think McAllis good enough to kind of avoid getting submitted there. So um, ever so slightly into a doe, but I like the overs. Leslie Hernandez and uh, Julieta Martinez. So this is a really interesting – uh, one that you have going on here. Um, this fight that Hernandez just had in LFA that was in July 2024, that was a three round war. Um, really, really impressed by her, uh, by Hernandez's cardio, her toughness. Um, I think it was tied going into the third round and she dominated, got, got it on the ground. Um, just uh, never quit. Uh, just really just heart of the champion. I'm hitting all the cliches here. Um, so I, I, I don't think she's really polished. Uh, a lot of holes in the game, but she's never gonna she's never gonna give up. She's gonna keep pushing forward. Her striking is pretty good. She's got pretty good ground and pound. Um, she has a, a pretty nice ground and pound win here in round one. Um, uh, she does have another knockout, and these are in LFA. I know the records don't look good, but LFA is you know decent organization. Um, they put out some pretty decent fighters. So, and then here you go with a 20, 20 year old that's seven and zero oh, and. Not a ton of film uh, on on her. You you can find some, but there's just not a lot. Um, I, she's pretty similar. I I think like good ground and pound. You know, pretty tough. Only twenty years old, so obviously not not the most most polished uh, polished fighter in the world. Um, I have a weird theory with this one. It feels like on contender series when there's these fighters who there's not much film on but they're the favorites. It's like the book, the books know them really well and they're putting them as a favorite for a reason. So it's like, okay, 
we may not be able to watch a ton of film, but the books are. And UFC obviously has. Um, they know a lot more about the training. The books are kind of telling you a story that Martinez is the favorite here. So that's where I was leaning. And then I watched face-offs. And I don't know. Hernandez is bigger. Um, I, I know that that doesn't tell the, the whole tale, but it – it was kind of glaring in, in in my opinion that Hernandez is bigger. And does that mean that she's going to automatically win all the clinches? No, but I think it means she's got a pretty decent advantage and 20 years old is pretty young. I know she's seven to no, but fighting out of samurai house. Um, I'm not really sure how good these opponents are that she's fought. I know that, the, that, that, uh, Juarez is seven and O, oh, but again, where are these fights taking place? How good are the fighters? Can you find much film on them? And um, this is another one I, I'm just more interested in taking to go the distance. Um, whoever you like to win, take them to win uh, by decision. So if you like Martinez, just take Martinez by decision. If you like Hernandez, take Hernandez uh, by decision. Again, I'm looking at overs in this one, but when the books have when the books have someone as a favorite that there's just not a bunch of film on, that's who I'm more leaning towards. Um, I think they're pretty even, so it's not going to be a big bet. Um, but I, I I would like a little sprinkle on the overs here. Davale and uh, uh, Montero, neither of these guys excite me. I don't even think Dana White's going to be that impressed unless one of them like pulls out an amazing finish or they've changed kind of the ways that they approach their fights. Um you know, Diwali is not a great striker. He likes to accept position on the bottom to work for guillotines, which like we we call it the four loco, like accepting position, trying to go for guillotines. It's four loco. Sounds like a great idea. You end up regretting it a, a later. Um, I just don't think it's a style that's going to work long term. Um, Mount as it didn't work. He didn't get the submission here, uh, you know, in his last fight. And. I wasn't sure he won the fight. He was going for submissions and that's what the judges rewarded. And the announcers were just, you know, falling over themselves. Oh, what a great submission attempt. Like, was it though? Uh, he didn't get it. So um, I just, I, I don't know. His striking doesn't excite me. If he doesn't get the submission, he ends up just being on bottom a lot. And I, I just, I don't know. No, it really, he really doesn't jump off the screen for me, even though he's seven and zero. Oh, and, you know, honestly, Taro, he's nothing to write home about either. I've seen him strike for long periods of time. He does have, you know, an arm lock on him, uh, an arm lock submission and an arm arm triangle and a rear naked. But I, I in his last fight against Lucas Tavares, he was mostly striking and it really wasn't that great, but it is better than volleys. So um, if the volley doesn't get the submission, I just don't see that much upside. Um, on there. So uh, the pick for me is going to be Montero in this one. I think he keeps it on the feet. I think he lands um, some more punches. And I, I hope both these guys realize that they're going to have to put on a really, really good show because like these guys that, 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 you know, the arm lock and the, you know, arm triangle and the rear naked. Yeah. Those goes down. It finishes, but like for Montero, but the is much better than those guys. And the, the same can be said for the Like, the guys he's fighting, like they're just—I don't think they're as good as Montero. So, in order to get a contract to impress Data White, he, they're going to have to show something special. So, uh, Montero's the the pick in this one. If you want to add a li little bit more value, you could go Montero by decision. Uh, the volley's got good cardio. I will say that both these guys have good cardio. I don't think they're going to be exhausted in the third round. So. Uh, that's a pick for me. Um, guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. I want to tell everyone what we have up for this week. We do have our 5% PFL and UFC pack. This 5% play goes off in the PFL. We've hit 70.5% of our bets in the PFL. That is uh, most part to uh, Jim, uh, who you guys know is just a PFL like fountain of knowledge and his picks have been absolutely fantastic. So we have our 5% PFL that is for the card for the uh, battle of the giants. And then we're going to put all of our UFC plays. I'm not a big fan of the UFC card this week. And we're coming off of a week where we had fantastic reads. So we're probably going to be playing it light one, maybe two plays in UFC, but we're going to put all of our PFL plays in UFC in one pack, 5% play. We hit our 5% UFC play. That makes five out of the last six 5% plays winners in MMA. For Contender Series, I do have a best bet, and we're going to put that up Monday evening. 
And that's going to be good Monday and Tuesday for only $5. So $5 Tuesday, take advantage of that at wagertalk.com, wt.buzz slash AL. We're on a 23 and 10 MMA run. Uh, can't beat $5 play for contender series. And uh, I would not put up this play for week 10 if I wasn't very, very confident in it. So whenever we put up a play for five bucks on $5 Tuesday and it's on contender series week 10, yes, we're feeling very, very good about that. So I uh, encourage everyone to take advantage of that. Those are the two big plays that we have up uh wager talk full disclosure. We always like to give everyone our record for this year, uh, 458 wins, 297 losses, 147.85 units for an 8.5% ROI. So uh, dream year continues closing in on that 150 uh, units uh, profit. And we're going for 175 by the end of the year. Hopefully we can get that. So, all right, let's get back to the last two fights. Uh, Nick Pic- uh, Piccanini, you guys probably remember him from earlier in the season when he fought Jack Duffy. So here's what happened. He fights Jack Duffy. Dana White likes Jack Duffy, except Piccanini wins. Dana White isn't a fan. So he says, you guys are fighting again, like like he's Nero. Uh, you know, you, you will fight in front of me later on in the year. It, the writing was on the wall. He, he thought Duffy won the fight, so he was going to hope that Duffy wins the rematch, and then he can give Duffy uh, the the contract, and he can kick Piccanini in the ass on the way out. Problem. Duffy backs out of the fight. So now they're scrambling because they promised Piccanini a, 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 a challenger. And so in comes uh, Luis Grule. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I watched his fights, and... Originally, I wanted to fade Piccanini. I really did. Um, I wanted to fade him because I, you know, he's a grappler, wrestler. Striking didn't look great. It looked like his cardio would give out when he was striking. But wrestling, he's he's one of those guys where his cardio, when he gets on the ground, immediately just gets better. But when it's on the feet, not so great. So I, I was looking at him as a guy to fade because um, I was like, you know, it, it wasn't an exciting fight. I thought he showed good heart and uh you know he was able to win the third round which i think gave him the fight so i was looking to fade him and then i looked at his opponent uh, uh this really i have a lot of concerns about and the first is that this guy just doesn't hit that hard um this arm triangle choke that that it goes down as a submission was one of the most random arm triangles it's round four silva like swings in and and uh, Grule catches him in this, like, he catches him in like a standing arm triangle, gets him to the ground and submits him. It was very random. Uh, it wasn't like he set it up beautifully. He just kind of spur of the moment, grabbed it, and uh, Silva was exhausted. So he gets it in round four. Credit to him. It was a really nice, nice win. But up until that point, he was not doing a ton of damage with striking. And before that, decision, decision, decision. And if you're going to beat Piccanini, you got to you got to be able to strike and do damage because he is going to close the different di- distance. He's going to get his wrestling and grappling going, and he's going to win big control time. Um, I I was not impressed with him, and now this guy is just fought on September 22nd. That's three weeks ago. He, like Piccanini's had more time uh, to heal up. So a four round fight where you only got three weeks to kind of. Jump into contender series on the very last week without having a lot of time pre- prepare. I I just I, I'm a little worried about that. Really doesn't look like he does much damage to his opponents. And at faceoffs, I love Piccanini the way he looked. He looked a little bit bigger than him, which I didn't expect. He looked calm. He looked focused. Uh, he looked like it just looked like a guy who knows what he has to do. He's had almost two months to get ready for this, get in the mindset of I've got to put on a good performance. I have got to go for the kill. I've got to do damage. I've got to win convincingly in order to get this, this contract. So I, I went into this wanting to fade uh, Piganini, but um, yeah, I'm having second thoughts about that. I do think this fight goes the distance. Um, Both guys, pretty good cardio. I didn't see, I, I do not see knockout power uh, from Guru. I know he's got knockouts earlier in his career, but it's in Co- Colorado Combat Club. Um, I just haven't seen it. Uh, he's got decent volume, but that's not going to get it done on contender series, especially against uh, uh, Piccanini. So uh, Piccanini doesn't sub him. I don't see how this fight gets finished. So I will take this fight to go the distance. Uh, hopefully we get a good line on that when lines come out on Tuesday. And the main event, Nick Klein, Geraldo Souza. 
I'll just say it. This is a, my opinion, fairly lame main event <laughs> to end. It's like they were struggling to find fighters. Um, I'm not high on either one of these guys. I hope one of them wins and gets a contract because it's fade central. I'll start with Nick Klein. Um, I mean, his last fight. I mean, well, his last fight, he, okay. He likes to take guys down, lay on him and try and get submissions. Uh, it's worked in his last two. Um, but this, this fight against Colin Huck, Huck body, like so much lay and pray, just holding on for dear life. If he doesn't get the, if he doesn't get the early finish, I'm not sure like what upside he has. I mean, this is a guy that got finished like three fights ago in round three by ground and pound. So, um, I don't know. I, there's not a ton of film out, out there on him. He looks, I, I don't know. He's one of those guys where I think he looks like he should be better than he is. Um, you know, in his, you know, his first two fights only lasted, you know, 17, 29 seconds. At least he does get, you know, get a, a fight that goes the distance before he loses. And then he gets three rounds. I just haven't really been that impressed with him. Um, so Souza, Here's another guy I'm not that impressed with. He's going to have the better striking. That's fine. Um, nice knockout against Fisher, but this fight against Philo, man, he was exhausted in the second round. Like they had some scrambling and wrestling moments in the first round, and he was exhausted. He gets the knockout, but he was dying. You know, Philo was dying even worse. Um, I just, I, I didn't see a lot of upside. So I think if Souza wins, it's probably going to be with the striking on the feet. If Klein wins, it's going to be because he, you know, gets a hold of him and puts him on the ground. I would lower my expectations for an exciting fight in this one. I hope I'm wrong. I, I really, really hope I'm wrong. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to lean Klein just because he's plus 145. I'm certainly not going to bet on him. I don't want to bet on either one of these guys. Um, I really don't want to bet on the over the under. So I know it's kind of lame to not have anything on the final main event of the season, but like, you know, our job is to try and try and pick winners. And this is a fight. I just don't want to have anything to do with. I will say, keep your eye on live lines in this fight. If Sousa wins the striking battle in the first round and starts to get tired, then like look to take advantage of that on the flip side. If Klein tries to get takedowns and it's just not happening in the first round and he doesn't get finished in the first round, take a look at Sousa um, as well. So, um, Recap, it's just overs. It's just like, I just am really, really liking the overs here as opposed to the sides. Uh, Ado and uh, I, I like this fight. Maybe if, if I'm putting get it together a parlay, I think both these three fights maybe over one and a half, depending on what the lines are. Maybe all three of these to start round two. I'd like to get it below minus 200. Um, I think you could probably throw this one in there. Maybe the first four fights to start round two. Um, but these lines are really close. Um, so if I'm, if I'm having to pick for the video, I'm going to lean a doe. I'm going to lean Hernandez here. Uh, I, I face offs. I don't want face offs to completely make or break the decisions for me, but I thought the size advantage was, uh, was, was, was pretty, pretty glaring for me. So I'll take Hernandez there. Um, I'll take Matero. To win by decision, um, I'll lean Piccacini and I'll ever so slightly lean Klein. But for what I'm betting, mostly it's uh, it's going to be overs. So, all right, that's going to do it for the Dana White Contender Series uh, breakdown video for week 10. Again, make sure you join us for the live show. It's on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel. Myself and Jim will be there for the last week. Uh, it's a great week. We're going to go through. We have write-ups, by the way, on every fighter that that got a contract. We'll go through all those as well. So um, you guys can have those still frames and still shots. It's unbelievably helpful when these guys start making it to UFC because you already have the write-up on these guys. So we've got write-ups for every contract winner uh, from weeks one through nine. So that'll be a really big help to you guys as well as we'll give the BMF award uh, for, for, uh, um, for the entire season. So 5% PFL and UFC pack is up $5 Dana White contender series. Best bet is up 23 and 10 run in MMA. And we've hit five out of our last six, 5% uh, MMA, 5% play. So grab those over at wager talk. Shortcut is wt.buzz slash AL. We've shown some really, really good long-term uh, profits. We we're plus 91 units in 2023 or plus uh, 147.85 this year. So Happy with all the work. Shout out to everybody. And thank you guys for joining us uh, for all th throughout the season. 
And don't forget to leave a comment on our best bet. If not, just leave the word link, I-L-N-K, in the comment section. Really helps the algorithm out. All right, that's going to do it for us. Good luck. We'll see you later.